Hi, my name is Jonathan Halton and I'm guitarist in uh, the band Tribulation and we are currently on tour in North America. Beautiful. Jonathan, thank you so much again for your time. Really appreciate it. So you guys are doing a shorter run this time around. You've been out for 12 days and you're almost done the tour, is that right? Yeah, we've, been, we've done 12 days this far and uh, I guess it's about a fer- third of the tour. Yeah. So. And where'd you guys start? We started in Montreal. Okay. It was the first time we started in Canada, actually. We went to from Sweden to New York and then took the bandwagon up to Montreal started there okay cool have you found that there's a big demand uh, for metal in Canada yeah I mean it's been good for us every time we've been there and um, I think there's there's a scene there I'm not really um, well informed about that but uh, it has always been good for us yeah okay very cool and you're originally from Sweden yeah we all live in Sweden you still live there now yeah, in Stockholm. Beautiful. So what's the scene like there? Uh, so like, I guess for teenagers, like when you guys were young, what's it like then and then how's it evolved up till now? Well, in our hometown, we were, it's, it's, there was a generation sort of, uh, a group of people with uh, an age span of maybe like 10 years or something that, well, were in different constellations and created different bands all the time and there were a few bands that emerged from that um, that soup (laughs) and we were one of them Tribulation and then we moved to Stockholm and then uh, I guess the scene there's a scene in every city and it's just different it's so what are the main differences would you say is it is there certain elements that contribute to the sound of the music out there do you think I think that uh, the people involved are um, influencing each other so it's it becomes sort of a collective thing forming um, opinions and tastes and the direction of where everything's going it doesn't necessarily have to continue that way but that's how things start I think Gotcha, very cool. And is there a lot of competition between the bands, or do you guys out there usually help each other sort of climb up together? No, I wouldn't say there's a competition. You just need to do your own thing and believe in what you're doing. And then there's only friendly competition, if anything. Right. Yeah, I guess there's just the camaraderie involved, but you can really only focus on yourself. And about you guys' latest record uh, called Down Below, I've been listening to it, I'm loving it, and I feel like it really just oozes taste and class. That's what I'm getting from it. So is there any conscious elements of that when making the music, or do you just go in and just do whatever you feel? Well, I think there's, there's a foundation to our style, and there are certain elements that have been with us from the start and influences, only that they're being expressed differently from when we were teenagers, for example. And and I don't know, maybe these elements are sort of maturing into, well, into us being us now. In we're, well, I'm 29, the other guys are 30, Oscar is 28, we're approaching middle age (laughs) that's cool yeah so um, okay very cool yeah you know I mean I I find that there's a lot of different elements you have the metal you have like the guttural sort of screaming kind of sound which I really like but you also have these sort of space age type elements uh, especially on this latest record what kind of music do you have you been listening to and when you're listening to other music while making a record are you conscious of that or do you worry about it affecting the music you're making at all there are certain bands that we have always liked a lot um, and have inspired us. Camel would be one of those bands. And I guess you could attribute that spacey, proggy sound to them a lot. And Popol Vuh. The, there, there is actually a lot of prog, <laughs> 70s prog. Did you like Rush at all? Rush? Um, no, I've never been into them. I, I don't really know them, but our last drummer, Jacob, was really into Rush. 
Okay, cool. Oh. See, it's interesting because most people, when they hear prog rock, they would just assume that you like Rush, but you actually like the deeper stuff. The deeper stuff? Um, yeah, I don't know. There are just certain bands we like. Yeah. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Let me ask you about this. There's some people online who talk about you guys' as visual influences, some of the influences in your in your music, uh, and they feel like there's sort of supernatural elements. Sometimes they associate it with occultic type elements. I'm just curious on your thoughts about that, and if there's maybe any truth to that, and if not, how does it make you feel? We have had uh, an interest in... Um, in those areas, so to speak. And personally, uh, on an individual level, we have been uh, also exploring those territories a lot and bringing that into the lyrics. And, well, it's hard to, hard to translate into to music, I guess. But, I mean, it's, it's easier, the direct line from, uh, from the, those sources of inspiration into the lyrics, it's more obvious. But yeah, it's it's certainly there. Uh, it depends maybe on what you are referring to. But just in general, it's it's been an inspiration as well. You could put it that way. Very interesting. So what sparked your uh, interest in those sorts of things? Uh, yeah, I think it, it probably was music. Because <laughs> okay. it was involved in some of the metal? Yeah. yeah. And initially, it's it's the sense of of darkness and uh, horror and I guess the sense of drama that, that comes with an expressive music genre or band like, I mean even a band like Kiss can get you in that direction like wow this is this is scaring me I'm sort of awesome I want to know more about it and yeah. that's curiosity is what drove us to where we are now I think that's very cool. Are you a Kiss fan? Yeah, I am. Nice. How do you feel now that they're uh, announcing their end of the road tour and retiring? Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, it's breaking oh. news. Okay, cool. Uh, well, I guess I have to see them. Yeah, <laughs> it's going to be a three-year-long world tour, so you should surely be getting the chance. Has it been? It has been personally kind of sad for me to see Ozzy and Kiss retiring. You know, those sort of metal heroes. But I guess you know everybody has their time, right? They're legends. Yeah, yeah. and. Uh, Every time, every all, I mean, every generation have their heroes, I think. So yeah. new heroes will emerge, no, yeah. as always. Yeah, that's a nice thing. I, I, a lot of people point to guys like you guys, guys like Jack White, guys like the Foo Fighters, uh, you know, well, some people, and they say that there's still hope for rock and roll. Do you think that there will ever be groups of that magnitude, though, to reach the magnitude of ACDC and Guns N' Roses in terms of heroes, or do you, do you think they'll just come close? That's a hard question. Uh, in a way, the times, uh, the circumstance of, of the times they started out in and were active in in the early years could have um, decided the outcome or the position that, that they're in right now. Um, there's an idea that it was easier to get bigger earlier because the internet didn't exist. <laughs> and even back in the MySpace days, like 10, 15 years ago, 13 years ago, I don't know. Um, but even then, it was easier to sort of break through. But I sort of like it this way better. Not that I actually know how it was back then, um, being in a really active professional band. But uh, I like the idea of the democratization of, uh, of the platforms. I guess it leaves it more up to the people. They can vote in who they want to see and who they want to hear. And I guess the people decide how big they're going to get to. Yes, yes. And it's also a lot up to the artists themselves to choose how to present themselves and do the, a lot of the hard work, actually. Yeah. True. There are a lot less rules now as well, so it, it opens up those avenues for artists, most definitely. Looking back, what's been your fondest concert or festival memory? Hmm. Well, um, should have been 
Anna Turnheim at Hultfredsfestivalen uh, 2006, I think. She's one of my favorite um, singer-songwriters and was a huge inspiration. Yeah. Beautiful. I've always wanted to go see a concert uh, over in Sweden or something like that because it just seems like the emotion in the audience is so much more palpable. It just seems like there's something different in the air. What do you think that comes from? Do you think it's because they don't get the acts as much as maybe North America or is it something else, do you think? They don't get the access as much? Or? The acts, like coming through their area as, for concerts as much? Or do you think they get them just as much and maybe they just feel more strongly about the music? Hmm. My personal uh, thought about that would be that mm, there could be something about the, the way... Uh, the culture, maybe? Like how people are in their daily lives and that they get a chance to live out their... Their emotions, basically, yeah. and connect with a huge uh, crowd, a huge group of people through the music. It's like a big ritual, yeah. And people just in their daily lives are very um, removed from that. Yeah. It's very remote for them to to experience something like that or be very emotional. In Sweden, I think, or Scandinavia, it's, it's very, it can be very reserved and dry sometimes. But then, when people get a chance to <laughs> to show their emotion, it, they go bananas. Just let loose, eh? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really something I'd, I'd love to experience sometime soon. Two more quick questions for you. I just want to know what's your number one interest aside from music? Um, art. Do you paint? I do. I do. That was the fir- first thing that came to mind. Uh, I guess it can um, mm, contain a lot of different directions and aspects, but just generally, art, aesthetics. Mm. Very cool, beautiful. And last thing I want to know, if you could switch musical abilities with any performer in the world for one day to experience it, who would you pick? Michael Jackson. <laughs> oh, that'd be nice. Give a little hee-hee. Yeah. <laughs> Awesome, beautiful. Well, thank you so much for your time. Truly appreciate it. And uh, we look forward to seeing the rest of the tour.